Okay, because our deadline is looming for the project, we now have to ask ourselves, what can we get done by the deadline? And we were just cutting this out. We can play with arranging it. We've got lots of reference here now to kind of layer on top. This all kind of works. And I can play with the coloring. Now that I'm moving into the middle tone or into the mid-range, I can play with a little bit more contrast of color and lighting. So I might goose the highlights and deepen the shadows just a tiny bit. Just limiting them the slightest amount so they don't feel like foreground. And instead of playing with the full hue, I first always want to do color balance and push the depth by deepening the shadows with a little bit of cool tones. And now I'm going to use the highlights and the midtones to warm it up. And that allows me to push the shadows even more. Then it really starts to come forward. Even push the green a little bit. So again, that's what it was. This is what it is now. It kind of sits into the mid-tones a little bit better. And I could play with the full hue saturation and just kind of mess with it completely. But I don't want to be too wild. Maybe I'll just push it a little bit more towards the warms. So those reds pop. Okay, next I got these chanterelles. And I've got the mushroom lake. So with this edge, I could try to find that just with a lasso. Let's see if I use the quick selection tool. And I just, uh, it just keeps on being way too sensitive. Hmm. Usually you can, can help a little bit. But the other, other tools I can try, under lasso, there's what's called the magnetic lasso tool. And this will try to find the most contrasted edge as you draw. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. This helps. All right. So you can try that. It takes a little while, but it, it does get there. You see how it kind of follows along that edge, especially when you have shaky hands and you're not great with it. It will kind of fit along with it as you go, within reason. But these are not perfect tools. So when in doubt, Just use your straightforward lasso tool with some feather. But also with the deadline looming, we want to really know what we're doing it for. And this is just for the edge of our mushroom lake. So maybe before I even work on the chanterelles, I'm going to define the edge of this soft focus lake a little bit. And with that, I'm going to use the magic wand with contiguous and a feather of two pixels and holding down shift to really select all of this white space around it. And then probably quite a bit of feathering to get that halo out of there. So command D There we go. Command D. And then does the lasso get everything? No, it doesn't. I want to go in and maybe taper this little stem. Make something out of this.
tighten up this top edge so the feather comes in. And now I can go to my chanterelles and kind of see where I want it to be the terrain behind the soup. And because it's organic, I can almost just make it up and then delete away. This is my, my little boulders. And as I cut away, I'm adding sharpness. And I can use the sharpen filter as well to see if that helps. And where it overlaps, I'm safest. Don't need to worry about it. It's helpful to do this with a, a tablet. I'm just using a trackpad right now, but whatever works. Then you can hold down shift and add to your selections. I like to do it in little chunks like this. I'm just viewing it at 100%, so don't zoom in so much that this is taking forever. And you're limited by the focus of the photo, or I'm limited by the focus of the photo. So if the photo is not in focus, you don't want to use that part. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of something to use. Now this is kind of fun because I have the lake in the chanterelles. This is an instance where I'm going to make the lake less opaque and then erase away from it. So I'm going to be cutting from the lake layer, but I'm going to be tracing with my selections around the edges of some of these mushrooms. So it feels like they're creating kind of the border of the lake, like rocks on the shore. But I'm not cutting away from the mushrooms. I'm cutting away from the mushrooms soup. And I can do it section by section like so. And then when I take the opacity back up on the mushroom soup, see it looks like there's a shoreline there. So I want to do it all the way around it. Hold down shift. I can add to the selection I've already started. I can just start new chunks. Nothing wrong with that. Just remember what layer you're erasing away from. Because it's easy to make mistakes. Like I, I just cut the leaves off. I don't want to cut. So I'm going to hold down Option and modify my selection to leave, leave those little leaves in. And then hit Delete. Keep it going. And it's hard when you have ideas that kind of get outstripped by the time of the deadline, but that often happens. So I'm going to do enough to kind of get the idea down. I'm going to do a little bit at the back here. Again, because it's organic, I can just find my own edge through these mushrooms. And then if I wanted to delete something, just hold down Option. That's how you can modify any selection. Okay, and now let's bring that lake back up.
and now it's sitting in the chanterelles. Okay. Save it there. I'm trying to zoom out, but photo P is being a little slow. Okay. And now both of those, I can play with adjustments because they're very yellow, but yellow is kind of working. So let me just jump ahead to the next element, which is cabbage. And on top of that cabbage, I have cabbage blossoms. And on top of that, I have the celery tree. And on top of that, I've got more more greens so much so let's in the light of deadlines let's edit it down let's see what do i want i think this is basically all i would need and i already kind of cut this out a little bit let's put the blossom on top of it I can rearrange in a way that will work. I'm going to play with the levels of that blossom. I'm going to deepen the midtones. Going to brighten the highlights so it comes to the foreground. I'm going to play with color balance. I just did levels. With that, I'm going to make it look a little bit more dimensional, especially important in the foreground by warming up the highlights and by cooling down the shadows. I'll leave the midtones where they are. Add a tiny bit of magenta to the midtones. Okay, I've got these leaves that I can make a slightly better organic profile to, cutting out, but I like how they're overlapping the mushroom boulder. And I'm still cutting them out with a slight one pixel feather, which means the more I hit delete, the more it will soften. Continue that on here. Maybe I don't need much of this at all. It's a shame to have those beautiful boulders of chanterelles and then just hide them, though. So let's take all of this down a little bit. Select both of those layers. Uh, but it looks artificial that way. So maybe when they're both selected, I can hit Control T and then maybe tilt them, warp them, shift their perspective a little bit, distort them, force that foreground a little bit bigger. And sometimes you got to kill your darlings. You got to be willing to crop things off. So hit return and then go right to the blossom again and then control T distort it to overlap and fill the space just an over just a, a little bit. That relative perspective so it's clearly in front of the middle ground. If you click on just a fast way to do image adjustments is just to click on image auto tone. And that will balance out the histogram. It will put it to its like most extremes, which can work in the extreme foreground. And so that's helpful. And then we have this lettuce here, which I just want to play with its color balance and levels.